Hey there, FlossTube. This is Kathy, the hands-on designer. It's Saturday morning here in the studio, and I thought I would take a little bit of time to share with you some of the things that, wow, what have gone on over this past week. So lots to talk about, so I'm just gonna dig right in. Um, a week ago, I uh, shared some information with shops about one of my newest series. It's called Scary Apothecary. And I wanna do a couple shout outs because um, uh, just some people that kind of worked behind the scenes to help me get the series going. Um, linen, the linen is called um, Winter Wishes. It's Fabrics by Stephanie. It's a beautiful, pale, kind of a, I call it a cool neutral. So if you're looking for the right shade to work on, um, well, Winter Wishes would be what I designed on and stitched on, but it's a very, it's a cool, um, it's a cool neutral kind of, in some lights it's like pale lavender, but it's got a little bit of gray in it. She actually sent me the fabric, the linen a year ago, and I was trying to make it work for another piece and it just didn't work. And I hated like anything to tell her, I can't use it, it doesn't work. Uh, Cause sometimes it, these things just happen. But, um, so I, she's like, keep it, I know you'll use it. Well, when I was developing this series, it was like, that's the perfect linen. So I'm so excited that um, Winter Wishes Fabrics by Stephanie worked out. Um, also, the entire color palette is Classic Color Works and also Krynik Number no. 4 Braid. And I wanna talk about a little bit more about that in the beginning, in, in, in a few minutes here, because I know some of you are gonna go, Krynik, metallic, oh, the horror. Number no. 4 Braid, not blending filament. So give it a try. I did, I loved stitching with it. And then um, also, this is one's kind of a, a well, you may or may not notice, um, when I do series, I tend to really like to do um, kind of just some sort of a unifying what I call a logo or something like that for my charts and um, I was running late on time so I reached out to Kelly um, I hope I'm saying her last name right Stadola she's that's so Kelly she's got that Etsy shop she has the Bitsy Bobs floss tube channel with um, Joan and Kelly show and she did some work for me last summer on the um, thread card the thread gauge um, for my silver needle uh, retreat project and so I shot her an email and I shot her a bunch of ideas and she shot them back to me and oh my gosh she's there's the woman is very talented she picked up on um, it's it's nice when you can find somebody who sort of speaks the same language and she got what I was going for and so you'll see on the um, on the on the the charts as they come out and then in the advertisements too so it was fun to be able to use that because had I taken the time to do it that's exactly what I would have done and so I'm I'm so glad that that worked out anyway so thanks Kelly anyway so let's talk about the first three um, again I, I, the inspiration for the color palette for a lot of these came from um, a set of shiny bright Halloween ornaments. Now, a lot of you probably know that Christopher Radko bought the company Shiny Bright and the trademark and whatnot. And he's been um, putting out new shiny bright Christmas ornaments, but he also started putting out Halloween ornaments. And I happened to be in my, um, my local, uh, oh, what's the shop? Oh my gosh, I can't remember it. Um, home Goods, thank you. And um, but my, my local Home Goods is an hour away in Sioux Falls. And I was there, and I saw the ornaments, and I went, oh, "Gotta have them," because they were just these pretty, not Halloween oranges and blacks and purples and greens, but just soft, kind of soft pastel. Dare I say vintage? And I just fell in love with them. I bought a couple sets because I do put up a Halloween tree. And then what was really funny was um, my sister who lives in Virginia texted me a picture of these shiny brights and she goes, guess where I am? I'm at home goods. And I'm like, I know I bought some, <laughs> but the picture that she sent me actually had different ornaments. My home goods didn't have them. So being the nice sister that she is, she bought a couple boxes and sent them to me. So now each of them that ended up being the color palette, kind of the inspiration for the color palette. What I also liked was that each one had a little bit of sparkle to it. And that's when I thought, 
this would be the perfect series to introduce just I'm calling it scary sparkle just a little bit of sparkle in the Krynic braid so um, I just think it really works out well so um, one color palette cohesive color palette for the whole series now when I post these I will put colors for the individual ornaments because of course not every I think there's 10 colors maybe 10 yeah um, but not every color is in every ornament okay but the black that's in this is the black that's in that kind of that's sort of the way it works um it's fun to design that way i the first time i did that was um last year on um white christmas and it's fun so i kind of have the colors there and i can sort of pick and choose and it's a fun part of the design process i don't know i had never really kind of worked that way um and so but i enjoyed it so i'm going to show you a little bit of each one the first one we have is bat bomb and so the, the other part of the inspiration the other part of the story was that um as i was looking for some i was pinteresting around for some uh halloween and or uh, decoration inspiration and they had all these scary looking labels like that you could print and stick on lab on bottles and stuff and decorate for a halloween party but they were all spooky and in really blacks and browns and grays and drab colors and I thought well I'd like something kind of a little more vintagey looking but yet with color um, and one of my favorite lines to tell people is you know I love full deep intense vintage pale colors I mean that's like every nothing really that doesn't mean anything <laughs> but I just I love working with the, the color palette like that so, and then it just started getting humorous. We literally, when I say we, my husband and I were um, sitting one night at the counter and I, when I start, you know, generating thoughts for a series, I use any piece of paper I can get my hands on. I have gorgeous sketchbooks, but yet I still use pieces of paper that just whatever's sitting in front of me. And so we just started, you know, I love a good alliteration, bet bomb. And, you know, all of this just started coming. And, and we, you know, someday when the series is done, I'll show you some of the scratch pads because it's so funny to look at. It's kind of like a beautiful mind of cross stitch designing. I mean, there's just stuff written everywhere on the pages. And then when I go back to really actually do design work, getting it into the program, it's like, wait a minute, where was that idea? And I got to search through all the scraps. <laughs> I've gotten much more organized. At least I keep an, uh, a, a folder, a file folder with all the scraps in it. So, um, but uh, so I added, you know, with intent, a little bit of the here. Can you see that? A little bit of what I call the scary sparkle. And um, and each has a little, you know, a little spider on it. Now I've had a few people say I really don't like spiders. Okay. So stitch that road spider in a different color and it's no longer a spider. It's just a motif in there, okay? So um, bat bomb, zing for your wing. Bitter brew was kind of an ode to my husband, my, my brew drinker. And this one was fun because in the bottles is where I used the, um, the, the metallics, the, the, the number four braid. Um, and it's kind of it's a very dull sparkle it's a matte sort of a matte color and but it's got just it catches the light right and it's got just a little bit of uh, sparkle to it and yes before all the grammarians get on me i say for a foul scowl they're gonna say you spelled foul wrong i know it's f-o-u-l but i that made the w for the birds just to be kind of funny so um uh, bitter brew and then this one my husband says is for me broomstick fuel <laughs> broom broom i'm assuming he's saying that because he thinks i drive fast <laughs> not because i use a broom <laughs> at least he better think that um anyway this one you know sometimes the designs change as they go from this point to that point to that point. This one was always gonna look this way. I just ate you know, someday I'll show you the original sketch that was just always going to be that way it just was and it just it's like it, it, it was just fun i just love the um the curls and the swirls and they're just meant to be funny halloween um but you could but kind of like a label that you would stick on a bottle on apothecary jar so those are the first three 
you are, I will, the little hint I will give you for the next set of three and the next set of three after that is you'll notice everything, it's a lot of bees. Broomstick, bitter brew, bat bomb. Well, I did that is with intention and each set will have kind of a theme, much like when I did White Christmas when there was the theme was the tree or the, the reindeer or the house. Um, this we're gonna focus on a letter. So contact a shop. Um, I keep a list of shops on my website, those that order directly from me. These release at market, but many are starting um, little clubs or pre-order lists and all that stuff right now. And um, so, that's my hope is that if it's something you want to do, um, give, give your local shop um, or check out the website for a shop, give them a call. So that was, that actually happened like really in the beginning of the week. And um, so then the middle of the week, um, it's February, it's my husband, it's our wedding anniversary, 31 years of wedded bliss, love you babe. Um, so a lot of you know that every year I do a little token or trifle, a little complimentary design as a gift for my husband. And then I put it on the website and you all can stitch it. It's a little complimentary design. Um, it's close to Valentine's, but yet, um, these are small enough that you could definitely get these done. Um, a few, I'm not, I, I had to run around the house this morning to find the previous years cause I, I just sort of tucked them in and I don't know if that I have them all. I think I'm actually missing only the first one, the very first one, it was Love You More, it was a long pillow. Um, I actually keep that, um, I don't know where that one is right now, <laughs> I'll find it. But anyway, um, this was one, You Bring Peace to My Heart. And My Heart Leaps Up. And Be Mine. And of course, this one I see L-O-V-E. Last year's was With You, I Am Home. And of course, this year's Love is Kind. Taken from, and you can read my blog post, you can find this pattern a couple different places. You can read, um, well, I sent it out in the email, so if you're on my email list, you've got a hard link to, the, to, po to print it. Um, you can also go to the current blog post on my blog and get a link to it. Um, you can do that actually with all of these, um, but I will tell you now a few of them, you'll read the blog post. Just go back and look for whatever post I make about this time of the year, usually late January, early February. Um, now in some of them, I do say, um, you know, you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope for maybe the little extra bits. Whatever I might have offered at that point, that it, it, there's done. I'm not going back to, to change the, the post, but save your stamp. Um, those, those are all gone, long gone. Um, and I did not have anything to give away in this year. So we didn't do, I haven't done that every year. And I told you, I think a couple of videos ago that I wasn't gonna be um, doing that this year. Um, not for any particular reason, it just happened that way. So save the stamp, you might need it next year, who knows? Um, but anyway, so this, so you can get this on my website, on the blog. Um, you could get it in the email, so sign up for the newsletter. You can also, I did post it in um, two places on Facebook, in the Hands-On Design Stitchers. It's a, a fan page, um, a very sweet gal, Ida, runs it for me. And then also there is a Hands, H-O-D, Year of Celebrations, S-A-L, a stitch along for those that are doing the Year of Celebrations chart. And I encourage you to join both Facebook groups because, oh my gosh, the inspiration I get by seeing everybody's finishes, um, y'all are some fast stitchers and some very creative individuals too. So I love seeing everybody's finishes. And um, and I, I have seen a few stitching this already. I did see one finish um, last night. Uh, she uh, did it in softer tones. Um, and then she had some little vintage um, crochet, little bits of crochet that she did here. So this is my front, and I didn't get to show the back, but I did the back, and, and I covered it because in my instructions, um, you stitch this, and the finishing instructions are on the chart, and then um, you attach this fabric about, about three quarters of an inch below the stitching, and then, um, and then I, there is a template on the chart for the heart shape, 
and of course I sew all the way around it and then I cut through the backing fabric and then after you trim and clip all your seams and um and then so then you'll stuff it through the back and then you'll close that but then I like to cover that with either like I might do some like an iron-on heart or something like that but I had some of these um, extra little wool felt hearts there and those are wool felt hearts and then um, like I said I just kind of had my stash and I that's what I encourage you to do use your use those little things that you bought you know because you're like oh, I'm gonna do something with that someday and then these are some hand dyed um, buttons from just another button company that I also had and then because um, that actually came from their button lovers club so if you ever say well, why would I do a, something like button lovers club that's why you would do button lovers club because I went to my stash and I had those buttons and then I had more red buttons and you'll see these are all different um, different shades different um, you know some are just different bu buttons um, so that covered up my little scar on the back and just gave it you know if anybody ever looked at the back because you know we all pick up our needlework excuse me the dog's barking I don't know why um, but uh, we, we all pick up the back and say oh don't look at the back and what does everybody do they look at the back <laughs> anyway so there you go the back I think is sweet and I did tie, I added everything. Can you see that? I did add my buttons after it was all done. So you can see I, I ran the needle through the button, through the um, wool felt flower, through the pillow, and then back up. And I tied, I did a top tie. And I did that on purpose. Um, I know, um, okay, Cecile told me one time, she said, don't do that anymore. <laughs> and she showed me how to attach things that a, to a pillow that's already been done but I actually wanted the extra texture um, on on these I did it all over the back too so I wanted the, just that little bit of I just am a fan of layering with texture and with these it's just kind of fun I think the more layers the better so sorry Cecile but anyway um so so go to the um the website look for the blog or go to any one of those other places and it was really kind of funny because um, you all crashed my website, <laughs> which I know when I think about it is a compliment because everybody wanted the chart. Um, it was funny though because I didn't actually know that it had crashed. I posted and did all that and then I went to work. I was doing some finishing. I had stepped away from the computer and um, my uh, bill uh, texted and said, you know, your website's down. And I went, it is. And so, of course, then I went back to my computer and I had like three emails from GoDaddy. Your website is nearing capacity. You know, your website is at capacity. Red alert. Your, your website has exceeded capacity. And, and then the IT guys that, you know, it's like, well, that's why I pay them. Um, they actually, you know, got it all taken care of and handled and, um, and got my website back up and going. But the funny thing about it was that, you know, this saying was from the verse, 1 Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. Um, Bill said, well, maybe they ought to practice the love is patient part a little bit more. <laughs> so just, you know, line up one at a time, go to the website, no problem, it's back up, we're, it's all good. Um, so I just, I just thought that was funny. I will say, um, the only times my website has ever crashed is once a year when I post this. So that's kind of cool. Thanks for, thanks for the love. But uh, so that was Wednesday. Another big event on Wednesday. And this is the last one I'm going to talk about today. Of course, we've been sneaking peaks of farmhouse chalk for, oh, a couple weeks now. Um, for those of you that don't know, I collaborate with Priscilla Blaine, she's a chalk artist. She's half the mother-daughter team, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. They're actually probably filming their floss tube video right now. So um, we are continuing into the year with our fourth series. This is Farmhouse Chalk. And I'm excited because um, we're, we're giving you a little bit more in, in, the, in the package um, and, and we're both kind of I don't know I just we're very excited about this um, we've talked through some of what like what's coming up and and all those kinds of things Priscilla's really uh, explored some new 
graphics kind of things in her uh, drawings and it's fun to interpret for me and I'm just really it just to me it just keeps getting better and better it just does I don't know it's she's so much fun to work with and so carrots and cottontails so last year was more um, seasonal like winter spring summer fall but this year we're gonna do um, we're gonna do more holiday like so I guess you could say it's spring but it's sort of Easter because we got those cute little we got those cute little bunnies on there we still have the truck See the little bunny in the truck and then but we're we're focusing on the farmhouse this year not the barn but the house and we've got also you know and I realized when I did the pictures um, you couldn't see but I just loved my polka dot bow but just that really cool border up there of all the carrots and tulips and little cottontails. That's why I went with the, the, the polka dot bow because those just look like little cottontails. And again, on the big piece, it's pretty much the same size when we did the seasons that went this way. But this time they're all going to be um, vertical. And again, um, excuse me. Um, okay, I, I posted yesterday. These are... I did not ever think that I would say, I have a favorite chicken that I designed. <laughs> but I have a favorite chicken, and it's this chicken. He's a little bit bigger than some of them, and um, and I really love the way she did the perspective coming, you know, there's the farmhouse on the hill, and then coming down the hill in steps. She did a really cool job of like the perspective. So those are bigger chickens than they normally are. And the bigger I can make the chicken, the little more detail and nuance I can put in. And um, so he's my favorite chicken. And well, I guess he's my favorite chicken too, because they're really, you know, the same chicken. But um, with the big one again, you have a couple different vignettes that you could do. And we, a lot of you have said you like it when the pieces end up that way because maybe you don't want to stitch the whole thing. But um, quite frankly, if you want to do the house and you love, isn't that tree just, when she sent me the drawing with those swirls in the tree, I, I, I squealed. I just, I squealed. I just, it was pretty cool. So, um, excuse me, just a moment. I have a cat trying to drink my coffee. My cats are active enough. They do not eat coffee. <laughs> but anyway, um, so there's the, would you like to be on camera? Come here, come here, come here, come here. This is Whisker. She's pretty thrilled. All right, there you go. Um, but anyway, so uh, when, like I said, when she did those swirls, I was just like, oh, I love them. So if you want to, you could just, you know, stitch this is a vignette. You can also, I designed this so that if you divided the house down the middle, you could, okay, um, you could actually have a vignette of like the carrots and the tree and then even put another tree over here. So there's lots of different possibilities there. Um, again, the truck is really cute. You could just do that little section. Um, I just love this hanging border of carrots and tulips. That is, it just screams spring to me. I don't know, I just, I just love it. So, um, a, a word about my finishing. Okay, this is an 11 by 14 frame. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, it was $14.99, half off, so bargain. And then um, I got, and I do intend to probably use this for all of them. And then um, gingham, the orange and white gingham, I also did get at Hobby Lobby. And, um, and then I did kind of the, the treatment with the large clip, excuse me, the large clip. I used two small clips last year and um, uh, I just felt like this needed, you know, I just, I, I love that treatment. Um, so this is foam core padded, covered with gingham. And of course you see, I kind of did the gingham on point. The reason why we do that a lot of times is number one, it adds a lot of visual interest, but when you have something that has lines and then you have to line it up like a plaid, you have to line it up with this line and that line and just make sure everything's straight turn it on an angle and then you don't have to worry about that and um and then of course the ribbon i just i had that in my stash um the gray with the the white polka dots just screamed spring to me so oh let me back up a second so what i did is when i covered this i actually took um 
well, I have a couple different tools, but some sharp objects. And I went through the fabric, through the foam core, and then I used my little brads to attach um, the Tim Holtz clip. So, and those are the, would be the Tim Holtz clips, the same clips that I used on the clipboard finish um, for year of celebrations. So if you bought a pack that had two clips in it, but you only used one, guess what? You already have a clip to use. And then I included my dear friends from Just Another Button Company, made the, took their couple of their carrots and they put them together. They're called three carrots. It's a, one of their pin mini packs. Um, so I just stuck it through the top. I just, I love just, you know, I, I just love layering. And then of course I did a, just a thin little braid on the side. I love layering it. It's an inexpensive finish um, because it's a standard frame. I liked this frame. It's a little plain. Um, last year I did one that kind of had that very shabby chic look to it. You know, I just felt like there was a lot going on here. I didn't want the distraction out here. I just wanted something plain and simple. This lets the needlework just kind of pop off. And then this just all sort of complements it. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just, just all fit together really well. And then I do intend to use the same um, frame each time. I'm gonna finish mine each the same way. Now I do um, this last year's frame, the one that I used for the series last year actually had little uh, little brads here that you could you know swerve in and sw swivel in, swivel out, and then pop everything out. This does not, but I have one of those little tools that you can pop those in. Um, and uh, I'll show that one day. Um, it's actually, I bought it at a craft store. They're like 50, 60 bucks. Um, it was a good investment if you're gonna do any kind of framing, because it's just, it's like, a, it's like a nail gun, but it drives those, it's a point driver is what it is, sorry. Um, so get one of those. They're a good little investment to have. And so I can just open those up and then take this out. This is actually a piece of, um, foam core on the back um, I covered with fabric just to make it pretty and because we all go don't look at the back and what does everybody do they look at the back <laughs> so um so I can just lift those up pop this out pop the new one in put this back in I'm good to go so this is the large sampler piece in each of the the one the charts for the farmhouse chalk series we're gonna do a sampler a sign and a small and so of course the sign is Carrots and Cottontail Farm. Look at those carrots. Are those not the coolest? Um, and of course the sweet little bunnies. And so it's a little bit obviously smaller. Now I think I've seen what Priscilla's done with hers and you probably too have. And you could put that, they're actually about the same width. Um, the width of the, the sampler and the width of the, the sign. Um, they are, yes, I believe they are the same width. So you could actually stitch those as one if you wanted to or switch things out. Um, and I flat finished mine with a little bit on, um, what did I use? Mat board. Um, and then gave them a little curve. And then I mounted it on a piece of um, foam core that was covered with that same gingham fabric. I am on such a gingham thing right now, I swear. I said, if you opened up my brain, it would be gingham inside. <laughs> um, and then I used, I ruched some ribbon um, to go around just for something different. And um, I'll explain how I do that in another video. We'll do a little quick little tutorial how I do the ruched ribbon in the side. But just, I just thought it gave, just something I hadn't done in a while. And I thought it would give it a little just a little, I don't know, I just like trying to mix up new things. And it's gingham on gingham, but this is a real small gingham on the gingham that again, of course, is on point. And then I just covered the back with a, another little piece of um, green gingham. So anyway, so this, I finished mine so it could be a leaner. Um, think about, you know, you could put a handle through here. So if you want to hang it on a door somewhere, I have a lot of um, open shelves and um, dis display space in my home. So I just like having things that I can lean or if I wanted to, I could quickly probably tack it up somehow. So that was the most versatile finish for me. Um, and then this is the one I'm so excited about. I have been asking Priscilla for a while now, you know, 
partly back when I did my original year in chalk series when I've told you the story before when I was doing some research and I was looking at images and looking to see exactly what made chalk art chalk art and could we make chalk art into cross stitch and you know this was five years ago now um, and I came across her blog and she had those the, her three tier tray and um, and she would always put like a little there's a little flat board in there that she would write um, you know whatever words and uh, for the season and she would change that out and I thought oh my gosh that would be so cute if we could add something like that that could then go into the tiered tray and we finally got it together and worked it out and this just went beautifully it's got a similar carrot and of course another bunny and the hippity hop oh I just I now she um, they're filming I'm sure they're filming their their uh, uh, the floss tube right now so I'm sure you'll be watching that and um, check out her finishes and that's what's fun about doing this with her is that we stitch on different fabric and um, we finish differently um, and uh, so it gives you just some different ideas of what to do now hers is flat finished um, and it's on a little crate I think that she chalk painted but anyway go to her blog and look it's adorable I knew from the outset that I would make mine a little pillow because I do the little again the little vignettes I, I know how I decorate with my things and like I said I knew I wanted this guy to be a leaner when I say leaner I mean like you know he could lean against a wall or a shelf or another object kind of thing and um, we have leaners and we have sitters this is a sitter and because he sits somewhere and um, those are technical terms you know but anyway so uh, it's just a cute little small and um, I finished mine as a little pillow and I used that same gingham fabric and then I had um, again buttons from just another button company that's why you join those clubs because you have them on hand and then this is just a little bit of wool felt that I cut into you know there was no pattern I just snip snip you guys know I've demonstrated that before in videos just made a couple leaves the leaves don't even match in size I didn't want them to because it just kind of adds to the whimsy of it and um, so I just did and yeah, I'm put doing this because so you can see they're not a, they're only attached up at the top with the button and um, now this I did um, how I was taught in attaching a button so that it doesn't have the little strings on top so because I didn't want that added texture for this because there's already enough texture going on there but I just love this and then I did the same thing where you know attach the fabric here iron it fold it down to the fabric side sewed all the way around and then cut through the back to stuff it and then with this back um, then I just took a little extra piece of the uh, the gingham and did the double-sided fusible and cut it into a square and then ironed it right on and so that makes a nice neat and tidy back so that's another option like I did the same thing with the flowers on the back of the Valentine so I'm just so excited about this one um, it just it just oh it makes me I don't know I always say this is my favorite one and Priscilla always tells me you say that at everyone and, and yeah I probably do <laughs> I'm guilty so carrots and cottontails farm ships should have everything back from the printer on Monday and we'll be assembling charts and then um, uh, we start invoicing and ship and packing Wednesday Thursday and then we are uh, they the first rounds hit the post office on Friday morning so you should be seeing these like first part of next week um, so many shops are taking pre-orders um, a lot of shops have already sent their order in the, as I said this is releasing before market I will have them at market so if your shop's not going to order it now because it is close to market time um, know that they will have a chance to purchase it while they're at market so this is carrots and cottontails farm from the farmhouse chalk series so yeah it was a busy week <laughs> They're all busy weeks now. We leave on the 27th for market. I've got a lot, a lot more. We'll, we'll make it. We're good. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. It's all good. Um, but of course, we're always working at the last minute because I think that's part of creativity. I think creative people just do better under pressure. We just do. Um, so uh, it's gonna be a good market. Um, lots of 
great designers are coming lots of new designers are coming um, lots of new shops so it's a great time in the needlework industry and I just I love it and I can't wait to see my friends um, both the shop owners and both the other designers and hang out with them in our downtime and yeah sleep is for March 6th you know we just you know that's just that's just when we're gonna do it <laughs> But anyway, so I wanted to share a little bit of this with you. Hopefully this isn't going on too long. Oh no, perfect timing. So, um, but you all have a great day. Make sure you watch Priscilla's video. Thanks for leaving comments. If you have any questions, I will try and answer them. Um, oh, this information, I should say, is up on the, this is up on the um, website now. So it's got the floss colors and um and all that good stuff and stitch counts and things like that so if you're trying to figure out how much fabric you need to purchase mine was done on 32 count slate fabrics by stephanie that's what i've pretty much done all mine on i think priscilla uses a black monaco hers are 28 count um so it so many different options out there for chalkboard like um and and black fabrics um, be they 14 count, 16 count, 28 count, 32 count. Find what works for you and, and stick with it. And um, I have found my favorite chalkboard looking fabric. So that's what I continue to use um, and you find yours. So uh, enjoy your weekend. I hope it's a stitchy weekend for you. And uh, we'll talk to you here real soon. And in the meantime, enjoy the stitch. Bye-bye.